Well, joining me now to discuss some of the issues that were raised over the weekend is Uthman Badar, the Australian spokesperson for his book to hear. Thank you very much for your time. You denounce democracy. You want fundamentalist Islamic law to spread across the globe. Your organisation has a fuzzy position at best on violent resistance. Why shouldn't Australians treat you, view you with fear and suspicion? Well, thanks for having me, Tracy. Well, I think uh, I don't want to respond to some of those uh, sound bites. Uh, our positions are very clear in terms of democracy, in terms of uh, what we're doing here in Australia, and, and, and that our, our, our primary struggle really is in the Muslim world. Uh, it's unfortunate that, uh, in spite of the fact that on innumerable occasions we've said that we are not working for an Islamic state in Australia, that this sort of uh, innuendo and fear-mongering is still being peddled. But you have this conference, you hold this conference in Australia. If, you're not, if your fight is not here, why hold a conference here? We, well, we hold it here because, again, uh, the Australian government is the one that is siding uh, with other Western powers in, in backing the tyrants and the despots that rule in the Muslim world. So your fight is in Australia, Whether it's Saudi Arabia or then? Egypt or Pakistan. So you, say your fight is in, so you say your fight is in Australia, then? No, well, it's, uh, our struggle is in the Muslim world, but the Australian government is a party to that. Uh, and we can, we can talk about local issues, uh, whether we talk about counterterrorism or national security. Uh, uh, you know, the Australian government uh, funds things like interfaith dialogue and, and institutes to promote moderate Islam, a secular, a political version of Islam. Uh, and so, look, I think I hope the irony is not lost uh, on, on anyone that it's, it's advocates of liberalism or freedoms that are saying, let's ban the burqa, let's, let's ban this, let's ban that. If you don't like our views, why don't you go back to where you come from? L let's test your these views. Sorts do you, do of, these sorts of approaches. Let me test your views. Do you agree with the view, for example, that, quote, he who does not rule by Islam should either retract or be killed? Look, as I said, I'm not going to respond to, to sound bites. Uh, our approach is very clear. But this is a that, quote. This uh, is a quote. Democracy. But uh, this is a quote, Mr. Ba this is a quote, Mr. Badar, that, that is purportedly in your organisation's literature. It is certainly a quote that has been uttered by some of the extremist clerics who would be front and centre in this Islamic state that you advocate. That he who does not rule by Islam should either retract or be killed. Do you endorse that view? Look again, as I said, uh, unless we're going to extol the, uh, a good portion of our literature, there's no point in taking out uh, in a phrase like that. I said, our Do you endorse very, very that clear. view? Uh, there are. Our approach is very, very clear that let's not let, let's be honest with each other. Are you we afraid have to answer views. that question? Uh, there, there is there is a very clear difference between a man-centric worldview and a God-centric one. And when we do talk about democracy, I think again we should be uh, honest with each other that uh, it's quite hypocritical on the part of Western governments to, to have all this talk about democracy while supporting dictatorships and, and tyranny in the Muslim world. Yeah. That's where the issue is. All right. So you're not going to answer that question. Let's. See. If you answer this question, is Australia an enemy of Islam because of our participation in the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq? Well, as I said before, the Australian government is doing a lot. Uh, in the Muslim world, it's doing a lot here to, to act as an enemy uh, and to do what it can against Islam. And that's why one of the talks in our, in our conference was about this. Uh, but I want to make a very clear distinction that I think the masses, the common man on the Australian street, has great potential and by and large are well-intentioned people, uh, but it's the systems and the policy, the government policy that is derived there from the, 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 where the problem occurs. So the Australian so, government is, a, is an enemy of Islam, you say? The Australian government has policies that are anti-Islamic, that have very clear agendas, and that support tyranny, despotism, things that affect human beings. I hope people can be empathetic here that this is not about numbers, this is mothers, fathers, children. Uh, as I said, Nick Sherry was in Uzbekistan uh, uh, earlier this year, uh, furthering bilateral relations with Uzbekistan. The Uzbek regime is better known, really, for, for political suppression of Muslims foremost. At the last we should be empathetic about these things. And, 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 and we want the wider community at the same time to account the government on these policies. At the last census, 68% of Australians were Christians. 1.7% mm. were Muslims. If it were not for our yeah. secular democracy that you denounce, you would not be entitled to a voice in this country, would you? Certainly not in the strength of numbers. 
Uh, look, again, as I said, uh, our, our views are very clear about democracy. Uh, it's, not a, it's, it's not a numbers game. Uh, we need to be can, clear can that there's different, the different question, opinions. Though, but can you address the question? Because I am, by any perception, you are exploiting the very freedoms that you exhort your followers to reject. So, so what, expressing a different opinion is, is to go against uh, the freedoms that we're given here? Because is that what it? I'm saying is, if, if it were values? not for our secular democracy that you have denounced, our secular yeah. democracy that you say is a dying form that you have denounced, you would not be entitled to a voice in this country, would you? For example, under the old Taliban rule in Afghanistan, what do you think would have happened to a thousand Christians who tried to assemble in a hall and preach an anti-Islam message? What do you think would have happened to them? Well, I think the, that, that question should perhaps be directed to the CIA and the Americans who, who put the Taliban in place in the first instance. I'm asking you, what do you think would have happened to them? Well, I, I'm not going to comment about specific situations that I have no specific uh, knowledge about. I said, let's talk about our reality here. The reality here is that we have, we're being very clear, we have different views, let's discuss them, let's have robust discussion, and the response is, well, why don't you go back to where you came from? Or, or let's ban this and ban that. And I guess the argument uh, is... I think, uh, 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 and I guess the argument, argument is... is well, I think the people will make their own argument. I guess uh, the it's argument... It's very, very clear. We're saying our work is... We're, we're saying our work is in the Muslim world and that the, the, the connection here is that Western governments are playing a very negative, a very repressive role in the Muslim world. Uh, and everyone should be concerned about that, every, every single, every single mum and dad and, and human being. The argument is that you are entitled to have a robust discussion because of the very democracy that you denounce. Well, what's wrong with us, with us holding different views then, Tracy? Well, because... We're not violent, we're not telling anyone to, do, to harm anyone. That is a central plank of democracy. We're and you, we've got different opinions. Because it's a central plank of democracy and you denounce it. Do you not see it an, an hypocrisy there? So, so let me, I want to get this straight. So democracy says you cannot have a different view about democracy. <laughs> that would be quite ironic, Tracy. You denounce democracy and you exploit the very freedoms that democracy gives you. Do you not see that? Is that not, no. not something you, will, you we, can see? We are, we, are, we are being very... I think, I think the hypocrisy on the part is on the part of those who, on the one hand, say you've got all these freedoms, but as soon as you, as soon as you come up with a different opinion, uh, they, they want you to, to go back or to, 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 to demonise you and to do all this fear-mongering. All right. We thank you very much for your time. You've certainly had an opportunity to thank express you, your view, I think. Athman Badar there. Well, there was a vocal response today from Australians of varied backgrounds following the statements made at the controversial Islamic conference. Here's what some of them had to say. I grew here, not flew here. OK, I'm 100% dinky-die Aussie. Our way or the highway? Because I guarantee you, if we went over there, we have to live their way, not our way. So Muslims in the West have to question joy. It's fine that they come here and enjoy the, the values that we have here, but I guess if they do come here, they should also be able to accept and embrace our culture and learn to live with our values and our beliefs.